This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this uh, 2021 Heartland Bighorn Traveler. Model number 33RKS. Okay, so it's raining here. This is a how to video. It's not a sales video or a floor plan video. It's a how to video. So I'm going to show you some of the features and how they work. Okay, so first of all, on the door side rear here, you can see that there's a quick connect there for the LP system. If you wanted to add a grill or or a griddle or something, you would plug it in there and you could tap into the LP system. This has a six point leveling system, so it has six jacks on it, and it's got an auto leveling system. There's two ways to control this. The uh, the out the there's one outside which is it does just the most uh, necessary things in the sense that. Let me, Right here, the two things you have to really, you really use a lot are the auto level and then the hitch height. Hitch height is the last height you were at before you auto level. So right when you disconnected your trailer, um, let's see, I got some uh, some water on the lens here. Let me see if I can get it off here. Bear with me. Sorry about that. This is terrible. Okay, so. Um, Hitch height is the last height you're at before you auto level. So when you pulled into the campground and you unhitched the trailer, that would be the that would be the position that it not remembers, right? So after you auto level and you're ready to leave, you push hitch hitch height and it'll take you right back to that position. If you were to push retract all, then uh, it'll take you retract all the jacks, even the front landing gear, and that'll nosedive. It won't hurt anything. It just won't be in the position you want it. The other thing to know is this will up and down will raise and lower your landing gear up and down. Now to turn this one on, you push both buttons at the same time. You see it just lit up there. Okay. Now there's another one inside that's on the touch panel. It does all this plus you can you can independently operate the jacks from each other. That's another feature this one doesn't have. So keep in mind if you need to do that, you can do that inside. Okay. All right. So hydraulics are here, of course. Uh, now this 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 well, first of all this is a kill switch or the kill switches if you want to disconnect the battery. Now this is a inverter, right? So what this does is it takes 12 volt DC from the battery, converts it to 110 AC, and then sends it to your refrigerator. So because you have a regular AC type refrigerator inside, the, the same uh, uh, type you'd have in a kitchen, so. The idea is you can you can run down the road and still keep the refrigerator going so you won't spoil anything because you have this inverter in it. Now keep in mind that when you're when you're towing down the the uh, towing down the road, your your tow vehicle's alternator will be charging the battery. Okay, the battery sends 12 volts to the uh, inverter, which inverts the 12 volt DC to, to 110 AC, then sends it to your refrigerator. Okay? Um, so that's what that is, and keep that. Keep in mind that this also converts power. It goes just the opposite. It goes from AC to DC. I'll show you that when we get inside. Okay. Hopefully, you understood what I was saying. Ouch. Okay. So this is the water station here. This is your water hookup right here, right? So you have this in this position, city fixture. So that's just regular city water. Now, if you go into a campground that doesn't have plumbing. On the campsites, you can pre-fill the tank right here, you know, and uh, once it's full, you, you go to the campsite, and uh, you can put it in this position and use the onboard pump to pump the water out of the tank. So everything will work just as though you have city water, even though you're pumping it out of the tank. If you have city water, you do not have to worry about the filling the tank at all, okay? Now, you have gray tank number one here. Gray tank number two is in the back, and this is a, the black tank here for your toilet. So this is toilet water and waste. And um, keep in mind that when you dump it by pulling the valve out, uh, you can you can keep it open like that and hook the hose of the dump station right onto this valve here, and it'll flush out your tank. Turn it on, it'll flush out your black tank. Clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. Okay. Now these are just cable and satellite through from the campground, okay, or from a portable satellite. This is your water heater here. There's controls inside. I'll show you that when we get in there. Now the water heater is right now is empty. Never run the water heater without water in it, so keep that in mind, okay? 
There's a second valve here. That's your second gray tank right there. You got a 50 amp cord with a reducer. Um, this is prepped for a backup camera if you wanted to add one. Also, um, this has a ladder, so if you need to, uh, the manufacturer states you should inspect the roof every 90 days, so keep that in mind. It's important to keep after your roof. Okay, so you have somebody check it out and make sure there's no damage by low debris or low brand, or, excuse me, excuse me, low debris and, uh, and low branches, things like that. So have that checked out, okay? We're cleaning right now here, so I have to work around with people. Sorry. Excuse me, ma'am. Okay, so this is your touch panel here. Um, right now it's set up for the leveler. You can see that the, you can go to manual, for example, and then you can operate them independently of each other. But all your slide rooms, everything is controlled from here, okay? This is your water. Uh, panel here. Um, you can turn the water heater on or you can turn it on electric right here on gas right there and your water pump of course to pump water out of the fresh water tank. The water pump is also used for uh, winterizing the trailer and this remote switch is for your inverter so if you're plugged into AC power for example you don't need to invert any power for your refrigerator so you could shut it off but um, when you're traveling you want it on. Okay if you want to keep your refrigerator running. Alright, so this uh, this TV is also it has, first of all it has two zones. Inside, one is inside, two is outside the trailer. It has FM radio, you have Bluetooth so you can stream wirelessly to it. You have HDMI's to, and that means you, you could put a, a portable Blu-ray player right into the system and of course it charges, but we have charging ports all over the place so Okay, and uh, this is the remote for it. Now your fireplace has another remote. So you can see it right there. Let me get a seat here so I can get down lower. There we go. So let's see here. You can, you can change the intensity of the, of the fire and you can also change the color of the, of the crystals. Okay. Um, you to set your temperature, of course, from here. It also has a timer, so you could because you could set it to you know. Let's say you you it's getting cooler outside, so you uh, you set it to turn on uh, 20 minutes before you get out of bed in the morning, for example. Um, it'll take the chill out of the trailer. Plus, it's running on AC power, so you're not losing or excuse me, using your limited uh, LP. So um, that's a good thing. So that's that. Now. This is the power inverter. So this does the opposite of the, or this is the power converter, does that, just the opposite of the inverter. It takes uh, AC power and converts it to DC power. So you have regular AC power coming on this side, you see you've got circuit breakers like you see at home, and then they're all labeled here, right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC here, and there you've got fuses here, 12 volt fuses, and they're labeled. So. Um, it does the exact opposite as the inverter. Um, it converts AC to DC. So also, this is a battery tender. So it'll sense how much energy your battery needs up front, as long as you're plugged in, that is, and it'll uh, keep your battery charged. So it's uh, also a battery charge. Remember, I told you when you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator will charge the battery, and when you're plugged in, this will charge the battery. So, okay. All righty. Hopefully, I'm making sense to you. Okay, so this, this is actually a hide a bed here. So you can pull the cushions off, right? And then you grab it down here and fold it out. And it's a three panel hide a bed. It's got foam panels on it, so it's actually pretty decent. It's not like the old ones with the springs and bar on your back, things like that. So you have that, plus you have two theater seats to boot. And another, another bed right on this side. So you can sleep uh, two people out here. So that's a good thing. All right, let me look at this over here. This is your, your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. Excuse my camera work here. It's right here. It should always be green. If not, you get it serviced. If it goes off, you uh, take everybody outside, leave the door open, um, shut the gas off at the front, figure out what's going on. Also, if this beeps very slowly, the same pitch as the 
carbon monoxide and LP gas, but very slowly it's telling you your battery's low. So it does three things, carbon monoxide, LP, and low battery. Okay? Microwave works like any other microwave, okay? Um, it does have a two-speed fan and a light on it. So this is, uh, I don't know if he's got the gas turned on at this point. I'll see. I don't think it is, though. Oh, yeah, it is. It's starting to light there. You can see. So he's, he's, uh, that might have just been the line or he's got it shut off. Either way, that's how it works. you got three knobs and three burners, and then you have the sparker, which you turn it clockwise to spark, and then this one is for the oven. So the oven, you have to light with a grill lighter. There's a pile of light all the way at the back, at the bottom. Let me just do this to make sure it's the grill lighter type. Yes. So you have to use a long neck lighter. And what you do is you go over here to this knob, you'll go to pilot, you'll depress it, and then you go down there and you light the pilot light. After it lights, you still hold it in for another 10 seconds or so. And once it heats up, you just go to whatever temperature you want. When you shut it off though, the, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the uh, oven, okay? All right. Your refrigerator. Let me just look at that real quick. Yep, so you have a, like I said, you have a regular refrigerator like you'd have in your kitchen at home. All right, let me go this way. Hopefully I explain, explain the inversion and the conversion to you well enough. I know when I came to the door there was people talking, and I'm not sure if you you heard what I was saying when I first came in or not. But this is your this is your thermostat. You just hit the mode button to light it up. Then you can scroll through from heat to uh, furnace to fan and to off. So when they say fan, the fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. It just circulates air. Cool obviously is full air conditioning, and heat is is uh, the the uh, LP furnace running. Um, if they give you an option to you for fan, try to always choose auto if they give you that option. That's the best way to do it. Okay, so in the bathroom, the sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. Keep in mind, this is a GFCI. There's probably two of them in this trailer, this and another one. But if you use the coffee pot, pot outside and it pops, you reset it inside, just like you would at home. Um, the toilet is a typical RV toilet, so uh, there's the flush pedal. The black tank is directly below. So you can't use it dry. So the idea is you, uh, when you, after you hook up your, you pull the campground, you hook up your power and your water, right? Then you come inside, you put one dose of chemical in there, and then uh, you step on the pedal and put about a gallon or so of water in the tank. Some people use more, it's up to you. Uh, and then the toilet's ready to be used. You never use it dry, because if you do, the smell will be terrible, and it can get clogged up. So you always have to start off with chemical and water in it. That's important. It's the kind of mistake you'll only make once, though, so if you don't do it. And always, with your fan here, always run the fan with the shower also, because these trailers are built very tightly, and um, uh, you want to pull the humidity out, okay? All right. So... Second zone thermostat for this zone here, okay. This is for your digital antenna, right? So you want that on when you're using the antenna, either here or up front, whichever. You still want that on, otherwise you won't get a good signal. And you, have, of course, have a TV up here. And this has a second signal booster on it right here. Um, you can see how it's get green like that. You can shut it off with that button if you want, but you want that to be green also. Keep that in mind. This uh, bracket swings out, so it's a swing out bracket, and uh, it locks in place. You just pull this rip cord to, to free it up so you can adjust it the way you want when you're viewing it. All right, let me look under here, see what we've got here. I don't even know for sure. Yes, two more, um, two more chairs for the dining area. Okay, let me put this down here. Okay, also you got wardrobe here. And this is pre-plumbed. You can use this for a closet, but it's pre-plumbed and wired for a, a washer-dryer combo. If you ever wanted to add it, it uh, a stackable fits right in here, okay? So it's up to you. This is just telling us this is pre-wired for a, 
uh, Wi-Fi signal booster and router and there's also going to be a port on the roof for the antenna that's all they're telling you that it is pre-wired for that just like it's pre-wired for backup camera also okay so let me see hopefully I've explained everything well enough to you um, let me look around see if I forgot anything I think we're good yes okay all right first of all I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit and second of all please remember to inspect your roof on a regular basis um, you're looking that's what I was talking about when I came in you're looking for uh, cracking or separation where any place you see sealant right um, that may not happen for years you don't know that's why you're inspecting it just to make sure um, you're just protecting your investment so you look for that plus you look at the roof attachments and the roofing material make sure it wasn't damaged by low branches or by road debris flying up there something like that so that's what I mean by inspecting odds are you won't have to do anything but you're just inspecting to make sure that everything's okay all right and of course this trailer uh, right now the water heater is empty uh, so make sure you put water in it before you turn it on that's important okay all right thank you very much